Hello you lovely lot and welcome to my channel. I'm Katie and we are going to unbox and create with May 2022 Scroller Box. So this month's featured artist is Arlisha, also known as Arlie Bean on YouTube. I quite enjoy watching their channel from time to time. I absolutely love their amazing loose style with portraits. It is something I aspire to do and that's what I'm going to try and do with this box. So what is the filling of this cardboard pie of deliciousness? Yes, I called Scroller Box a pie. Well, to begin with, we have a Pentel Side FX Mechanical Pencil. Instead of clicking the top, there's a little handy button at the side and there's an eraser at the top as usual. It's a pencil, it's very comfortable to hold. Ticks all the boxes for me. We have a Brunzeal Kneadable Eraser, which I'm not going to use in this video because I've already got one on the go right now, so there's no point getting one all mucky yucky just for the sake of. We also have a pad of West, that's what it says on the sheet, West Hot Pressed Watercolour Pad, A5, 10 sheets, it's 190 GSM, and yeah, does the job. We also have a Zahn Custom Angled Brush in size 8, it looks a little bit like a cat tongue brush to me, but hey, there might be a slight difference there. But the main star of the show are the peerless watercolour sheets. We have a pack of 12 and included in those are Arlie's Oprah. So I'm guessing that's like a, a nod at Arlie Bean. I can't even pronounce the next red, so we'll move on. Alazari, I can't pronounce that either. So that's another red. We have Alice Blue, Turquoise Blue, Mountain Green, Peacock Blue, which I think is a little bit more like a green, Heliotrope, I don't know how to say that one, but it's like a, a very deep ochre. Gamboge yellow, Bismarck brown, and a good old neutral tint. Now, these pack an absolute punch when it comes to pigment, so much so you need to be careful how you handle them. I personally recommend just holding them by the sides and not actually putting your fingerprints on the flat surface. Just hold them by the side. I mean, I'm gesturing, but you can't see me, but just hold it by the sides and how I've learned how to use them I do actually own some peerless watercolor paper paints but I just haven't featured them yet so maybe I'm gonna do a bigger video with these now but it does advise to actually cut a little bit of the paper off and submerge it into water which is what I've done because I can't be dealing with the mess right now as you can see, my desk is pretty white again at the moment and I, I want to try and keep it that way for as long as possible. The theme of this month's box is flowing figures, so I took it upon myself to see this as an exercise as trying to loosen up my painting style because I, I get a bit too intricate sometimes. I initially sketched off camera, again just because it's easier for me, I'm sorry guys and then obviously painted it on screen, which you're watching right now. And speaking of watching, whilst you're watching this, I'm gonna drop you a little factoid. Less than 50% of you guys are subscribed, which means the rest of you guys do tune in regularly, but haven't subscribed. So now's a great time to do it, especially if you like videos where I unbox these subscription boxes. And hey, I referred to Scroller Box as being a delicious cardboard pie full of artistic fillings as such. Come on, you've got to stick around for that more than anything. Anyway, let's get back to the painting, shall we? So, yes, I cut little corners off each sheet, submerged them in a palette, which was very satisfying to watch. And I kind of like the dilution level we're at right now. It's quite pastely, but again... I want to take it easy with this, there's, there's no rush. We've also had something similar to this, oh, a good three years ago, and I think that might have been in the scroll box where Casey Golden was the featured artist, and they were the Viviva. I can't really remember how to pronounce them properly. It's, I remember it being difficult. But they were the, again, it's a similar principle, it's just saturated sheets with pigment in them and they're a portable watercolour. And part of me kind of wants to do a comparison because I haven't touched those for a while either. 
I do recall with the Viva ones, so difficult to say, but I remember that there was amazing pigmentation, but the colour bleed was atrocious at times. And I'm actually quite pleased to say I've not noticed that as much with these peerless watercolours. I think if the paper's a little oversaturated with the pigment or whatever your dilution of it is, you can get a bit of cockling and blooming there, but I, I kind of don't mind that with this loose style. Uh, you kind of just got to let things happen, I guess. I was really pleased though that when you lay the colours over each other, it, it, they're so beautiful and transparent, but you can actually tell where it's laid. It hasn't merged in so much. And I think I recall with the Viviva ones, that just wasn't quite as achievable. But I guess back then I was using them differently. I mean, you don't snip the corners off, you use it directly off the sheet. For some areas though, I did need the pigment to pack a bit more of a punch and that's fine because I did go back to the master sheet where I trimmed the corners off and just used it directly and lifted the colour off there and applied it to the painting just for areas where I perhaps wanted a bit more contrast and a little bit more colour. So I thought for the subject here, I thought I would have a head emerging out of water. I thought I'd give her some crazy peacock blue, even though it's green hair. And I thought perhaps just having this character in a pool of water as such, it would encourage me to loosen up a little bit. And I did find that it did. Using this particular brush as well, it just gave me enough control for fine details as well as sweeping strokes. And it was nice to be able to do that and I do feel like it loosened me up quite a lot. By adding large areas of tonal differences, especially on the lower half of the face, I wanted the light to sort of be shining down on, on her a little bit there. It allowed me to, again, loosely apply those, but to make it a little bit more cohesive to look at, I added some details in, particularly around the facial features and maybe a few strands of hair here and there. In my opinion, I guess if I want to loosen up, I've kind of got to meet myself halfway and put all the loose stuff down first and then just add a few, suggest a few suggestive details in there. Now, when I did receive this box, and of course I already own some, I am super pleased to say that there are no duplicate colours with this set and the other set, but I think that needs its own video with a bit more of an explanation. I also found as well that this medium was very kind and when I wanted to remove the pencil marks with the kneaded eraser, they lifted out just fine. It wasn't like using a traditional watercolour with the gum arabic which seals the graphite in. It just lifted off which was amazing and it didn't affect the paint that I'd laid down either. So super happy at that. All in all, I really, really enjoyed this box. I mean, I do love a bit of watercolour. I loved the huge selection of colours we had there, as well as the nice pencil and brush. I know the kneaded erase is good, so I don't need to go there. And of course, a good amount of paper to practice on. I have some room for development with the loose style, but I'm happy with what I made. I want to say a massive thank you for watching. There should be a couple more videos I think you're going to love on screen right now. And of course, if you've made it this far through, why not hit that subscribe button if you haven't already? It really helps the channel out. And of course, share the video too. Honestly, I really appreciate it. In the meantime, I'll see you lovely lot very soon. Bye.